what is it going to take for the god of wind to whip up a hurricane once again? Hola everyone and welcome to the House of Epo. Today I want to talk about what I think is going to be the catalyst and the cause and the pathway for Epo to come back to the boxing ring as a fighter. For those of you that do not know, spoiler alert, Epo has been retired for quite a few months as of this point in the manga. Long enough to shave his head, grow his hair back, shave his head, and grow his hair back yet again. So it's been quite a decent amount of time. But what spurred this was two losses in a row, and not just two irregular losses, two critical KO to the face, clock cleaning losses. So the first one was to Alfredo Gonzalez, the man who has challenged Ricardo Martinez for the belt multiple times. So this man was already strong and somebody to keep an eye out for. And honestly, it's acceptable that Ippo lost this match. It could have shown him what he had to still achieve to become the best boxer that he could potentially be. The next loss, on the other hand, was not quite as forgivable because he starts going into his head thinking, you know, it's it might be okay if I retired. It might be fine. And that is not the way to go into a match. So once he finally gets into this match, he says, Coach, I'm going to show you, you know, everything that I have, and I'll be, I'll be okay with it. I'll have shown you everything that I have, and I'll be proud. And he gets absolutely destroyed by basically a no-name boxer. This was just supposed to be a comeback match, you know, something to build his confidence, and that did not work. In fact, it caused Ippo to retire again. Shaved his head, threw it back, shaved his head, threw it back. And once he traveled to Mexico to see Sendo box, we got to see this relight inside of him. These small embers of boxing love are still there. So to get these fires really burning, we need to use wind, ironically, to get Ippo into the ring once again. So the prompting of his comeback needs to be something emotionally challenging for him. He needs to come into the ring with a purpose, not just to prove the coach right in his teaching mentality. He needs to come back for himself. He needs to be a little bit selfish. And this is linking to the basically Monster Epo video, which I will link down in the comments below. But he has this emotionally spurring event, and it's finally time for him to step back in the ring. So what is his first opponent going to be like? What's the first match going to kind of be? Well, we're going to see kind of a hesitant crowd with this um, because they've seen him lose twice in a row. You know, he is a very popular boxer, but they don't want to see him damaged. And the rumor has it, he has had some pretty big brain damage punch drunk going on with him. But with this hesitant crowd, I think we're going to see a little bit more confident Epo, a little bit more calculating Epo. He's still going to be an infighter because that is his bread and butter. And Sendo has proved that inboxing works against the world. So Ippo can continue to follow along with that. This is going to be a very quick KO bout against a no-named opponent just to kind of rebuild this sense of wonder around Ippo. I think it's probably going to be the 5th or 6th rank in the featherweight division. It's going to be a quick KO where Ippo really does not get touched. And Imai is going to see this, which leads us to the next bout. We're going to get an invitation from Imai to challenge for the belt out of respect for Ippo and to give the crowd just a really good show. Now, Imai himself has stated that he has wanted to test himself against Ippo time and time again. Everyone has also called him the next generation Ippo, which I don't think is really fair to Imai. Uh, he has a little bit of a different mentality going on. He has a little bit boxing style but he again is inspired by Ippo so this would be a very fitting match and you also can't have Itagaki hold the belt and Ippo challenge for it because two boxers from the same gym are not allowed to go up against one another so Imai is in the ring waiting for Ippo looking at him from across ropes and Ippo enters in with this full confidence he's trained for this match he is going to prove to himself that he's ready to be back in the ring with this fight this is the quintessential way for him to start knocking on the world stage yet again. So, Ippo whips the ever-living daylight out of Imai. I mean, we are talking Ippo might receive a few body blows, but by the end of the third, Imai is down. He is unconscious, and I think that's going to be really, really interesting to see. Imai is going to wake up, 
Ebo is going to be holding the belt. This is going to be very similar to a date edgy comeback. You know, the person who's going on to the next level is going to be standing there looking at the opponent and basically be like, you gave me a good fight. Thank you for preparing me for the world. But Ipo was always physically there, but this is the fight that helps him mentally get to that next level. So we are now ready to relinquish the belt. Why? Because he's had one or two defense matches, and I really want him to get to the world a lot quicker. So he might do one challenge, give it up, and move into the world rankings. And I'm thinking that he's either going to go with the IBF or the WBC, because the WBC bat belt is currently open. It will give him a chance to climb through the rankings. Um, this could be a really different way to kind of go about it. Instead of directly going for Ricardo, he's going to climb his way to the top and prove that he's a champion, and then he's going to unite the belts, or at least do a match attempting to unite the belts. But as he climbs through these rankings, he's going to do something very similar to what he did during the IBPF days. I never remember those letters because it's hard for me to read. But what he did there is he basically became the unofficial IBPF champion by conquering all of the other national title holders so with this with the wbc i think he's going to do something very similar he's going to go around and take on the top people from each country basically learning as he goes and observing and becoming a better boxer and a better boxing coach really i'm from intermingling these styles i'm really hoping that we get to see a sparring match or at least a training match with vogue because that would be my ultimate dream now this is where i start to differ from a lot of people um, so Ipo is back in the ring. He is ready to take on the WBC belt, but Sendo now holds this. I think that this is where the story needs to go. A little bit different shift. Instead of challenging Ricardo with Sendo, you make Sendo be the second to last boss and Ricardo be the final boss. Sendo gets to move up. He doesn't want to fight Ricardo because he's not entertained by him. He doesn't get this feeling of fire with him. So he takes the WBC belt. Ipo goes and takes that belt from Sendo from a great match. This is the last in their trilogy, and honestly, it's going to be something incredible. We're going to see both of these men grow and change, and I believe that Ipo will retire Sendo with this match, um, which would be a little bit heartbreaking because Hajime, Hajime no Sendo is my ideal spinoff, but you got to do what you got to do for Ipo. So Ipo now holds the WBC belt. Um... But one thing that's very important is that Ricardo is being there this entire time. Ipo has this goal of strength to challenge. And I think that's kind of what we're going to get to see. At certain at a certain point throughout this entire growth, I think that Komagawa is going to have a health crisis of some kind. He's either going to die or be hospitalized and not be able to coach Ipo and Takamura anymore. So Ipo will be able to, one, take this knowledge that he gained from the coach and apply it to himself. The strength that he's built for himself and then give it back to the coach instead of just doing everything for Kamigawa. And that's kind of how he's going to convince Takamura that he's ready to go on and fight Ricardo. Because I don't think Takamura is going to be ready to accept him as a brother, as a fellow fighter again. Because Ipo burned him and the coach by extension so bad. But we're to the final fight of this entire storyline. It is the Ricardo Martinez fight. And to me, I think it's very important that this is a loss for Ipo. This is his final loss. He has been the WBC champion. He has defended his title once over there. He comes over to fight Ricardo Martinez, but he gives a fight like no other. And I think it shows that Ricardo was not always the best in the world. He had people that could challenge him. But to be strong means to accept your losses and accept your failings. And Ipo has never really done that. He's tried to blame himself, but he's never accepted this. I think with the final fight with Mark, uh, Ricardo, making it a loss and having him accept the repercussions of that, positively and negatively, he knows that he gave it his all. He knows that he did his coach proud. This is going to be what it really means for Ipo to find strength. Now, there's a few other details within the story that I didn't touch on. Obviously, how is Kumi going to feel? Probably not very good. I hope he breaks up with her and he gets somebody who's actually very supportive of him. But that's never going to happen because George cannot write a female love interest. And that bothers me to a very personal level. And obviously, we don't get to see anything with Aoki, Kimura, Takamura. All their stories are going to be intermingled with this. But I really wanted to focus on what the god of the wind is going to do when he comes back. And how he really does come back. So let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. How do you think Ipo is going to come back yourself? 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Hajime no Ippo related content. And for everyone new and old, welcome and welcome back. It's your boy Lohali, and I will see you next video.